Pro Group Management. Workers' Comp that works for you. Welcome to Nevada Newsmakers on the broadcast today. Congressman Mark Amaday is here from CD2. He's here for the whole show on an all-new Nevada Newsmakers. Big R is Northern Nevada's number one golden fire wood pellet supplier. More heat, less ash, 100% natural, and no additives. And there's only one place that stocks this many wood pellets, and that's Big R in Sparks, Winnemucca, Fallon, Fernley, and Lovelock. A river of wood pellets at Big R. As you know, Reno is booming. Toll's development company is helping it grow with insightful design and development, building community with every project, adding beauty, adding excitement, emphasizing our shared humanity. Reno is becoming bigger. Toll's development is helping it become better, more livable, more enjoyable. To learn more, go to tollsdevelopment.com, tollsdevelopment.com. Forget the weather outside. There's a blizzard of points inside the Carson Valley Inn during the 15 million points giveaways. Drawings every Thursday and Saturday, including four 1 million point winners guaranteed. And don't miss the 2 million point grand prize giveaways. It's the 15 million points giveaways at the Carson Valley Inn. Save money and take transit. Did you know you can ride the bus all day for less than what it would cost you for a gallon of gas? Plan your trip now by going to rtcwashoe.com. For 50 years, Nevada Heating has been keeping people comfortable in their homes. At Nevada Heating, call the Do It Right guys and get the heat back on today. Call us today and we'll fix it today. That's the Nevada Heating way. Why freeze for days on end when Nevada Heating can get your furnace fixed today? Call us today and we'll fix it today at 323-5585 or schedule us on our website at nevadaheating.com. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad, a no-holds-barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we're always pleased to welcome back to the program Congressman Mark Amaday of CD2. Uh, he's also an Appropriations Subcommittee Chair. Pleasure to have you back on the program, sir. Good to be here, Paul. Paul? <laughs> That's the rumor I'm spreading. <laughs> okay. Sam Shad had a name change. <laughs> Well, may, may, not today, but, okay. but Paul will be here hosting in the very near future. Um, so we're recording this uh, the day after New Hampshire. Um, any surprise there? Uh, you know, I mean, every place is different. Nevada is different, whatever. New Hampshire, I think, is a reflection of the state. You know, it was uh, probably closer than some folks would like. Um, but it's part of the process, and, you know, the history is what it is. And so that's behind us now. Uh, the Trump machine continues to march. I think some of the Nikki Haley folks who ought to be encouraged by those numbers. And I think for, for Nikki Haley, the big thing will be uh, what happens in, in, in her home state. And, and your thought on what's going to happen? Well, I, I don't know. South Carolina, you know, you know, Nevada's interesting because the thing that counts in terms of delegates is the caucus. Uh -huh. And the thing that doesn't count is the is the primary what's the name advisory or non-binding or something the non-primary kind of primary um, which is too bad uh, and, and so I guess the question is if, if you want to do a Trump protest then you vote in the primary that that doesn't count uh, for I guess Nikki Haley um, and they can say that they that they won it if that turns out that way and then the caucus, I think we know how the caucus will turn out. Although, you know, if I'm wrong, it wouldn't be the first time, so. Okay, so let me ask you this. I mean, the, the whole campaign of Stop the Steal, and then you have the caucus, which is engineered to get the delegates for Donald Trump, and you're going to have all these Republicans who get their primary ballot and don't see the president there and think that there is something going on. Yeah. And we've got the uh, Washoe County Republican Party chair coming on uh, next week to talk about this, to explain it. I don't think all the explaining in the world is going to make it work at this point in time. Well, you've chose the word work. I'll, I'll ch choose the, the word smooth. Whatever's going on here, and I'm not 
I am by no means an expert or, or whatever on, on whether you do it this way, that way, or all one way or whatever. Definitely not smooth, Sam. A lot of confusion. Heck, I, I mean, we had a lot of people go, well, what's the deal here and blah, blah, blah. We had to finally make sure that the folks in our Reno office kind of were dialed in knowing what to do and, and if you want a caucus then where do you go I mean just basic nuts and bolts stuff I think it's coming together in terms of those questions but not smooth in terms of the process or, or what one means or the other one doesn't count and one name's on here and it's not on there it's, it's, it's just anyhow I'll leave it at that not smooth uh, Jackie Rosen uh, taking credit for the lands bill moving forward in the Senate um, your thoughts on that as you have been actively working on the Washoe County Lands Bill along with a whole bunch of other lands bills for quite a long time. People can go back and watch all the times on this program we'll, over the we'll, last We'll few define years. moving forward because if introduction is moving <laughs> forward, then that's, a, that's an interesting definition. Um, it's, it's late already in terms of lands legislation in Nevada. We're in the full-blown presidential election season, which we try to avoid. Um, uh, Senator Rosen's staff has worked very hard on trying to put something together. I can just tell you that for the bill that we've done for the rural counties, which is um, getting ready to be marked up in the House, um, I've, got, I've got a tough hill to climb um, with the uh, ratios of what you're doing with conservation areas versus wilderness versus economic development, all that other sort of stuff. Um, and I'll tell you what, the Washoe bill and don't hold me to the numbers, but it's like three quarters of a million acres in wilderness and national conservation areas. Great. But I can tell you that I've already gotten a call from Arlen Melendez. Um, I've already gotten calls from people who have grazing permits up there who thought they had, a, had worked out language because northern Washoe has always been the biggest challenge of a Washoe bill. And there's people who are disenfranchised right now because they felt like they were told you know what, the sun's coming up in the east in this bill, and guess what? The sun didn't come up in the east in the one that's been introduced. Now that's not a death penalty, Sam. I mean, you can still modify it, this, that, and the other sort of thing. And as I said in the beginning, we'll be happy to take a look at whatever comes over from the Senate. I think probably the likelihood is our bill for the rural stuff, um, I, have com I have complete confidence. We've, we've read in the leadership, I including the new speaker, um, we've worked well with Bruce Westerman, met with him last week, tuned him up, that committee, stuff like uh, his public lands subcommittee of the Natural Resources Committee. Done all that stuff. Um, maybe it's one of those things that as we sit here, you know, almost February, um, I think the, the rumor is, well, the Senate will have something at the end. They've got a package they want and the House will have one and maybe they'll come together and it's like, well, that's good. Um, I hope something happens because the part that, that, that the rural part, we've been working on since as part of the Fallon thing. Right. And, and so it's, it's not new. Um, and, and so we'll see. But, you know, like anything, most of the rest of the nation doesn't understand anything about public lands because, quite frankly, they don't have the public lands that Nevada does. Um, so that's one of the challenges of, um, and, and no disrespect to anybody in the Senate, but I'll say this on your show, I miss Harry Reid. What did he say? When stuff got the way Harry wanted it, it happened. And now that apparently has hurt some feelings on staff in the, on the Senate side, um, in, in natural resources, Senator Manchin's folks. You've mentioned that before. But we're trying to work through that. We've had a meeting with Senator Manchin and staff folks and stuff like that. So, um, well, does, used, does, I, okay, so does Senator Rosen um, help in the sense that um, Joe Manchin, and as a Democrat, would like to see her reelected, I presume, and therefore would try to help smooth things out because you've had problems. I don't think I don't think it makes any difference with Senator Manchin since he's not coming back. Um, but but I would I would hope that it makes a difference with Chuck Schumer. But y you know what? You've got just two years ago you had Senator Cortez Masto in the Clark County bill. And that blew up. And, and that didn't make any difference in, because she was on, it'd be like, hey, that's a big feather in her cap. Um, and, and it didn't happen. So, so do, you, do you see any idea of a, a omnibus bill for lands bills? 
where everybody's lands bill goes through, that just doesn't strike me as well a possibility. It's too big. Well, or am I wrong? I don't know. I don't know. Um, there's certainly an argument for that, uh, but which is why I'll be honest with you. We worked very hard to get ours off the House floor last year, and it didn't happen. And that was one of the reasons we showed up every day. And it wasn't because anybody, it's just, well, you know, you, you shut the place down because you had the Speaker Olympics where we filled the trash can up with the top four draft round picks. Um, and so it, it wasn't a great year for boom, 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 that sort of thing. That's no disrespect to the House Natural Resources Committee. Bruce Westerman's doing a great job. Been out to Nevada a few times. But, but you're right. I mean, if you're saying, well, you've got to bet the ranch, what are you betting it on? Um, I wouldn't put the whole bank account on, on, well, there's going to be a big bill where both sides come together and hug on public lands at the end of the day. And remember, in the Senate, Sam, their procedures are different. And, and so if you get a couple people going, uh-uh, um, they can hold that up. I mean, case in point was, was Senator Tuberville and, and right. promotions in the military, which is a heck of a lot more of a national thing than Nevada lands bills. All right, so if you were a betting man, and this being Nevada, um, you think that this is not going to happen in this election year? I don't like where, we're, I'll say this, I don't like where we're at right now. I think we're behind um, with the way things move in Congress. Um, that doesn't mean we're not busting our tail to, to okay, so we wanted to be ahead of it. Now we're going to have to, now we're going to have to nip them at the wire. Um, so we're still full steam ahead, but, but th this isn't the way, when I diagram it, you know, on the clipboard, this is not the way I had it diagrammed. And, and it's not just a Washoe lands bill. You've got Pershing yeah. County lands no, that's, bill. That's ours with all the, all the rural stuff. Right. Yeah. So, so, so Lyon County, I mean. Douglas, a little bit of Carson. Um, Pershing's the biggest chunk. You know what the irony of Pershing is? My colleague Tom McClellan, well, I won't vote for anything that has wilderness in it. It's like, Tom, that bill for Pershing County was essentially written by the Pershing County Commission, the people with planning and zoning authority in that county. I says, we passed the Pershing County lands bill two Congresses ago as a standalone thing, and you voted for it, Tom. By the way, in the Navy stuff that we just finally passed last year, there's a ton of wilderness in there, and rightfully so. It's a, it's a good mix. The county, everybody was on board. There you go. And so, I mean, that's part of the challenge on our side. And, and remember, Sam, with the House as close as it is, you lose a couple of votes in a subcommittee, you're over the guardrail. Let's take a break. We'll come back more with Congressman Mark Amaday after this timeout. What do you count on? You count on your power every day. At NV Energy, we've always powered what's important to you, but we're not looking at the past. We're focused on the future. While our standards are high, our rates will remain low, and our commitment to renewables isn't just meeting standards, but leading the way, because you can count on more than just your power. You can count on the company who brings it to you. That's our promise. You can count on it. Truck drivers are some of the hardest working people you'll meet, delivering over 70% of America's freight and 92% of Nevada's. When there's a natural disaster, they're delivering critical supplies to help those communities recover and rebuild. Every sector of the economy and our nation's military rely on truck drivers. So let's take a moment to say thank you. On the open road or city streets, our truck drivers are rolling to make our economy and our nation stronger. Trucking moves America forward. Take a look at Pro Group Management and see how your workers' comp requirements can be met head on. By taking a proactive approach, Pro Group can assure that your company is meeting or exceeding state and federal standards. As you move forward in your industry, Pro Group moves with you, simplifying regulatory tasks, clearing the way so you can get the job done and look to your future success. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. Like a traditional handmade basket, retail is woven into the fabric of life in Nevada. From big box to mom and pop, retail supports our communities in countless ways. 
jobs for the disabled, team uniforms for kids, help for the elderly, and so much more. Retail employs over 1 in 10 workers. Retail supports Nevada, and we support retail. R-A-N-N-V dot org. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Congressman Mark Amaday of CD2, uh, Speaker Mike Johnson. Yep. Um, a, a man with no experience in leadership, <laughs> but comes across, certainly on the Sunday shows, um, as somebody very competent, down to earth. Um, he has very strong views on a lot of very conservative issues. Your thoughts on him, the problems he's running into, and how long do you think he'll last in that position? On him, very pleasant surprise. I think I told you when, when it was like, okay, he's going to be the next guy to, to be able to try it. In our conference roll call, I voted president. And, and it was like, what are you doing? And I says, no disrespect, I don't know the guy. Um, we've just traveled in different circles. Long story short, he calls me that night. We have about a 45-minute talk. And I said, listen, we're working on some Nevada stuff. C-130J models for the guard, the lands bills, that we've been working on for several years. And leadership's all read in because we know at the end it's gonna come down to how does it go in conference. And so I said, I want, I want three things. I want your cell number, I want your chief of staff cell number, and I want your, your uh, resources policy director cell number. Next morning at 10 o'clock, his chief of staff is in my office for 45 minutes. We're tuning all that stuff up. I said, okay, I'm in. I'm not going back to Nevada. And when you say, Mark, why did you vote for him? I say, well, everybody else did. Um, and so since then, Sam, I've been very pleasantly impressed with the job he's done. You did, you did a good description of it. I think he, in some ways, maybe he's the only guy that, that can herd the frogs in this wheelbarrow right now. Um, and he's doing so being down to earth, straightforward, transparent, working the issues. Now, some of the other, you know, some of the factions are like, well, I don't know, maybe, maybe uh, uh, vacate the chair is, is on the table again or whatever. And it's kind of at this point, Sam, speaking only for myself, it's like, listen, do whatever you think you need to. You're going to anyhow. And, and so shoot your best shot and let's see. Only, only our brand even though we only had, what, on, on our best day, we had five votes to spare. Right. Which was never enough as we now know, uh, but, but it's like, you got people, you know, that, that they're calling it the casualty T list, people who aren't gonna run again, Democrats and Republicans. There's some of those folks that aren't running again that are sitting there going, but you know what, I'm here till the end of the 118th Congress. If these guys start playing around, here you go, maybe some of us will quit early, we will resign. And you know what? If three or four of us resign, guess who's in the majority? Hakeem Jeffries. I never even, I, I'm sitting there at dinner, uh, the, the person's name is, but, but I, I mean, mainstream, rock solid, you know, and, and you're sitting here going, wow. Um, so do you feel the majority of the Republican Party, at least in the House, is moving toward the center because that's where the public seems to want. Yeah, I, I do. I, I think out of the 200 and whatever, I mean, the last vote on the CR where, you know, Tom Cole has a saying, vote no, hope yes. No disrespect to the folks who voted no. At, at Big Four, it was like 106 to 107. 107 said, yes, CR, we're not shutting down. We just get pounded. It doesn't accomplish anything. You have no plan. Okay, it's shut down. Now what? Uh, uh. You know, it's like, that's the wrong answer. But having said that, um, a big part of that 106 who voted against the CR were, uh, you know, oh, well, if I vote for it, I'll get a primary. It's like everybody as a Republican gets a primary. I've always had a primary. If I can't defend my votes, then you know what? I ought to be, you know, kicked in the tail and, and, and whatever the heck. So um, out of that, you know, 106, 107, oh, my God, it's like, let, let me tell you what, half of that, I may be wrong by, you know, give or take 10, one way or another. Half of that is, is like, vote no, hope yes. Let's take another break. More with Mark Amadek when we come back.
the Nevada Builders Alliance has been protecting the interests of the construction industry for over 50 years. Our programs save members thousands of dollars every year and allow them to provide much needed benefits to their employees. Our industry also allows Nevada to grow. If you're thinking about a career in the construction industry, reach out. And if you haven't thought of a career in construction, what are you waiting for? We are the Nevada Builders Alliance. Find your fortune during the $150,000 Lucky Fortune giveaways at Tamarack Casino. Cash and free play giveaways every Thursday and Saturday, including $5,000 cash guaranteed and $40,000 in grand finale giveaways. Your good times are at Tamarack Casino. Remember 2010 in Northern Nevada, 13 to 14% unemployment, thousands of homes in foreclosure, Nevada's casinos closing? Families in the Reno Sparks area were hurting. Many were losing everything. Then Story County launched a game changer for our region, a public-private industrial partnership, streamlined permitting slash bureaucracy, attracting Fortune 500 companies that made Nevada their home. Story County generated a river of cash to area communities. Economic studies by the state and others for the Gigafactory consistently show positive economic benefits for our region. $4 billion in local wages, $17 billion in consumer spending and economic activity, over $100 million in taxes to Washoe, Story, Reno, Sparks, and Nevada, just for the Gigafactory alone. Story County, improving Northern Nevada one industry at a time. Southwest Specialties has been making the homes and businesses of Nevada beautiful for more than 20 years. Their experienced designers and craftsmen create the walkways, backyards, water features, and a variety of outdoor cooking areas that add curb appeal and value to your investment. Call today or visit them at their website and see how they can make your outdoor spaces special. Southwest Specialties, creative, distinctive, beautiful. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Congressman Mark Amade of CD2. One of the things I've been talking about in this program over the last few months is the difference between political advertising and marketing. And in, in traditional advertising, you would never say, don't go to Joe's store because he's horrible and uh, he sucks and, and yeah. you don't want to buy his product but you should come to mine. Yeah. That, that would never work and people would be insulted and they would go to the other guy out of sympathy. But in politics, that's all we seem to be doing. Now you have gone a different route. You picked up on what Congresswoman Barbara Vukanovic did a thousand years ago <laughs> with your Minutes with Mark radio ads where you just talk to the voters. Yeah. And so what do you think about your approach, and, and you know, the other thing I got to point out is, and you and I had this conversation many years ago, because one of the things I respect about you is you know what you don't know. And we talked about marketing years and years ago, and you said, I really don't know about this, but you investigated and you figured out that this was a good plan for you. And I would say that despite the fact that you are a conservative, your spending has been very conservative, but it's been in the right direction, which is why you've been reelected so many times. Why does nobody else realize that being positive is not a bad thing. Because consultants don't make money on being positive. The, the, I, I, that's just my belief, Sam. Uh, you kind of hit it on your lead-in, which is an election is a personnel session. Only in politics do you go interview, if you will, for the job, not by saying, here's the great things I can do for your organization or for you. You go in and say, all the other candidates suck. Pick me. It's like, really? That's, that's your message? Everybody else stinks, therefore pick me. Well, what are you offering? I'm offering those people all stink. And you know what? We let them get away with it. Which is why, and, and, I don't, and I've said before, if I'm doing the wrong thing, I take full responsibility. It's my fault, whatever. I'll get beat, um, whatever. But... I don't want to look over my shoulder when it's done and say, you really did that guy or that girl wrong by running all this horse on, on them. And, you know, and, and so it feels right, which is not scientific, but it's like, hey, that, that's what we do. 
And uh, it's gratifying to know that at the end of the day, um, at least so far, it's been well received and, and, and you've got a strong record where you haven't lost a county in seven races now at the federal level. Um, which is saying something when you've got a mix between Elko, Douglas, Washoe, you know, they're all different. Um, so anyhow, I, I couldn't agree with you more. But you know what? That there's a lot of money in political advertising. And those folks that, that control that, um, I'm not saying it's universal, but, but the vast majority of them are, we're going to make money by going out and kicking somebody in the teeth and then seeing what they spend at the dentist. I got to throw this in at the end here, uh, which is, and she ran against you uh, several cycles ago. Uh, Kate Marshall, the Democrat, has thrown her hat in um, uh, seeking the Reno mayor seat when Hillary Sheavey steps down in 2026. I, I want to get your thoughts on that. You know what? I, I, I mean, I haven't kept real close track of, of Kate since then, but, um, y you know, it's been now 12 years, so uh, I, I guess we'll see... Uh, We'll see what Kate's views of the world are. And, and, and the city of Reno itself, as far as an election cycle uh, or as an election entity, I don't know, maybe uh, um, I've gotten along real well with the mayor. And, and some people go, why are you saying that? And it's like, well, I, I, I may not have agreed with everything she did, but I respect her. And, and uh, so it'll be, that's an interesting question. Where do you go after Hillary Sheevy? Um, I, I just remember I did a debate um, and you weren't at that debate, but it was a debate for candidates for that election cycle for CD2. And I recall that Kate Marshall was running to the right of you in that debate. <laughs> and I, I pointed that out. So it'll be interesting to see where she comes down. As always, my friend, thank you for being here. I always appreciate it. Thanks for your patience, Sam. And we'll be right back. Imagine a magical garden that feeds Carson City's hungry and homeless, teaches our high school students agriculture, creates hanging floral displays to beautify downtown, and yet charges nothing. It's not magic. It's the Greenhouse Project. It's real, it's growing, and it needs your help. Go online to carsoncitygreenhouse.org so together we can grow it forward. 7 at 7 is a newscast built for your smartphone. It's a seven-minute newscast available every weekday at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. at LVRJ.com. We don't waste your time, and we give you the day's top stories. We at the RJ have noticed some similarities between us and a certain BTS character, RJ. Plus the latest in Las Vegas business, weather, health, and entertainment news. 7 at 7 streaming now on your smartphone. Modern Boutique Ahern Hotel and Event Center sits at the heart of the Las Vegas Strip. Two floors of meeting and event space are ideal for groups and conventions. Stay in one of 200 luxurious rooms and suite. Brand your event throughout the property. Flexible event spaces make for easy planning and personalization. Take over the entire hotel with a full buyout option. Thanks for watching Nevada Newsmakers. You can catch us online 24 hours a day at nevadanewsmakers.com or you can download the podcast wherever you like to get your podcast. We'll see you on the next broadcast.